a Hodaki, and uh, we're heading across to Makatu, uh, down here to Turangi, uh, back up Te Rea, Whangamata, across to Pukekohe, Hamilton, Awakino, and then staying the night in the Plymouth. Morning, so uh, just leaving the Potiki, and uh, the first, first stop is signs just out of a Potiki here. Got to sleep last night about midnight, and uh, up at 3.30 this morning, start basically uh, we should get us to up to about five well it's happened six and um then two ranking it may be about seven thirty or eight which will be great it's actually a couple of early hours earlier start than i was planning but the days are quite long and it just means getting that early start that i actually get in New Plymouth at a reasonable time. It looks like it's going to be about 13 hours of actual driving or riding time. So if that was the case, that gets us in for five o'clock. Uh, but realistically, that's going to be seven or or eight o'clock. Really, feeling pretty good. Obviously, it's early. There's not too much traffic on the road, which is great. So just coming through uh, Fokatani. Garmin GPS, it's the first time I've used it on this trip and it is an absolute lifesaver. This would just be so hard without it. Half the places we've been to haven't had any cell coverage, so welcome to Maria. I don't think we can see anything. I'm just gonna fill up with fuel because I was getting a little bit of range anxiety. to Waitapu to the thermal park where the next checkpoint is mud pool we're going this way Beaten the roadworks, but uh, there are some roadworks here. Could be a worse outlook. We're just pulling into T Rao. We had a pretty good morning, really. I think. I don't actually know what the time is. It's 270 k's plus 150, so that's um, 420. Out of four. It's got to be about half past eight. Possibly quarter to nine in the morning. Okay, here's Tear Hour. As I say, I'm looking forward to Tear Hour too. I've been looking forward to it. Gonna get a pie, a coffee, fill up. Treat myself to about 20 minutes. It must have been um, must have been about ten, so I don't know what I was thinking about the uh, the time back then. 
Anyway, um, had a bloody great pie and a cup of coffee, and so feeling excellent. Right, uh, we're just pulling into Pyro, and as you'll see, the most important part of Pyro. I think you're on the right, Lemon Pyro statue or monument. That's the most important part of Pyro. Okay, we're off to our checkpoint in Fongamata. Okay, we're just getting over to the Coromandel now, and uh, you can see over here the Karangahaki Gorge. Always stunning, lots of great walks through some of the old mining tunnels. I hope you can see the run of the river, which is beautiful. Big boulders down on the right. Looks quite low at the moment. It looks very low. Wahi now, and now we're gonna get that road up to Fongamata. It's gonna be feeling great, looking forward to it. Jolly hockey sticks, pedestrians. There's a big open cast mine up there on the left. Anyway, big open cast gold mine in Wahi, and uh, there's a really good gold mining museum there, so worth checking out. Hopefully, you'll see some more of what I've just seen, which is. Um, native ferns through here on some of these magic roads on the way up to Fongamata. It's a reminder of why people treat it as a biking route and there's like a northern loop and a southern loop and I think this is part of the southern loop. It's a choice but a road. And clearly some people just hang off these corners. I certainly don't. One thing I've learned with this um, TT2000 that I'm doing is, is what just sort of hardcore riders um, are involved in it and they are just naturally quick. I reckon about a third quicker than I am and obviously I'm just sort of trying to go safely but they just come flying by a couple of corners and they're gone. I have to say that this um, this event has just been so much fun and obviously I'm sort of only about halfway uh, through it but the roads that we've covered in the different parts of the North Island have just been incredible and obviously you pick your own route but you know some of these places there's just there's only sort of one way that you go in so you know these roads are bound to be a part of it Certainly overseas people that come here say that that's one of the you know the world's top rides and I'd have to think that it would be. Okay so we're in Fongamata and uh, Fongamata is probably one of the main kind of residential areas on the Coromandel in particular sort of for seaside sort of beach, surfing, so Fongamata Beach is, well Fongamata itself is pretty renowned, so this one's at the, uh, at the surf club. So you can see the holiday homes and the batches. I seriously peel off some clothes because I'm cooking, it was, it was quite cold earlier on, so uh, I lay it up, and now getting a bit steamy, if you need to resolve get the vents open and uh, get the extra jacket off the fleece greetings getting a bit warmer now isn't it which way are you heading? I'm heading over to um, that mystery um, there to the, you know um, the Bugger Cafe. Oh, right, eh? And then to Pukakoi. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm here to Pukakoi. 
a little bit of a longer stop than uh, anticipated. A couple of things to sort out. Including what I'm going to do if I'm going to go to the next mystery or not, which I am because it is actually on the way to Pukekohe. Pukekohe is um, about 120 k's away, so that's fine, about an hour and a half. Anyway, we're on the road to um, Pukekohe and we've got a mystery on the way. It's the um, Bugger Cafe, there's a sign there that we're supposed to take a photo of. Right over towards Thames now from the other side. I believe it's dry because this road always looks like it would be really slippery if it was wet. Reminds me of a corner coming out of the Waipau Forest north of uh, Dargaville that just sort of never seemed to end. Oh, sore ass. Dear oh dear. This is my biggest complaint. This is the Kopu Bridge, which I love the, uh, the Maori statues too. Looking down to the birth of the Thames, stand up, up that way, and then up that way. It's kind of the muddy side of the of the Coromandel. Well, <coughs> when Aaron put a cohe. taking the other way but I've just got to stop and have a uh, another pie and a coffee and uh, there's a BP Connect here at Narawahia and, uh, oh, and I also need to do a little splash and dash in terms of petrol because New Plymouth is slightly outside of the fuel range so better to grab it now anyway one of the reasons that the camera is on is that Narawahia is actually a really neat little place and it's um, got the river running through it here and there's going to be a marae looking out to the river along there somewhere I just think it's got a really neat aura about it it's a pretty old town though in need of a bit of love Bags. Okay, we just had the BP stop in Narawahia and uh, going towards this next checkpoint at a place called Fata Fata. There's a little sign of a, of a path here. And uh, I have to say, it was good to have that break, to have a coffee. I mean, you've got to do it. But the longer you have a break, the longer it does push out when you actually uh, arrive so uh, now looking to arrive at 10 to 7 at the beginning of the day it was 5 o'clock two hours of miraculously uh, evaporated but to be fair part of it is um, you just can't get there as fast as Garma thinks you can so when it's setting the uh, the route timing, I think it must be assuming like a constant uh, level of kilometres per hour. Because even you know the Coromandel with the word hanging about, some of that twisty stuff, the time was just extending so I reckon at least half an hour has gone through traffic then and in that sort of calculation. But I probably have spent an hour and a half 
supplies, uh, mucking around, getting changed, taking your shirt off, putting your shirt on, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, all good, all good. You've got to be fresh. But uh, I am keen to get to New Plymouth in good time. And so far, I think we're pretty much on target for that. Okay, so I just said I'd, uh, so I just did what I said I wouldn't do, just stop again, but uh, I just had to stop again for a couple of reasons. One, it's fine, so mics no issue, GoPros and, and uh, mics don't work well in the wet. I think you can stop both working. Secondly, the scenery is just so stunning. Oh, look at that, President Trump. Here is the great with this. I can't believe this sympathizer here. Yeah, should... Here I say it, hear that down. I wish I had the mic on before because going through Tinker Witty and out the other side of Tinker Witty was, uh, I know I've used this word, was absolutely stunning. You know, you come over the brow of the hill and another landscape unfolds like you've not seen before. So that was a real. Matey boy who's in front of me on this, I think it was down on DR650. Just stopped to make sure that I was okay. What a top bloke. We're on the road out to the place with Awatino, which is sort of en route to towards the Plymouth. opens up. Well, I had no idea. In fact, I think I thought this would all be kind of relatively rolling flat and windswept and instead it's, it's beautiful. Limestone cliffs. Oh my goodness, it goes on. Well, there's been a few times in the last couple of days when I've been kind of in awe of, of what's in front of, in front of me. You know, often because it's sort of unexpected, but this is definitely one of them. But it's interesting, you know, all the, um, sort of the, like the naked ferns and things that you can see on either side. I don't know why I wasn't expecting to see some of those elements of bush here. As I say, I expected much more of a sort of a windswept, windswept landscape. No wonder, you know, it made its way into a hobbit set. really see why. Are you still going? Yeah, I'm still going to uh, Whanganui. Oh, you're going on and doing that now? Yeah. Oh, good on you. Yeah, I'm 
basically be done tonight. Oh, what, everything? Yeah. Oh, get out of here. You had a big day today, then. Oh, yeah, I started at three. Wow. Yeah, got some police, some wood woolen crafts, John ambulance, art gallery, museum, butcher, cafe, hall, shops that once were, or so this is all new to me. So this road is going to take us out to the sea and it looks like it's going to go right by the sea. Oh, there's another inlet. Some batches. Moments like these that I think I might have to <laughs> do a little detour. Look at all those batches on the water there. I can't stand up and you see down there. There's batches all along. And there's some up along there too. Again. Right, I'm gonna have a wheel it. I really haven't got time to do this. This is why it takes me so long. Although to be fair, this is the first purposeful off piste I don't know if that's it private in any way that's a cafe yeah Okay, so um, I have to confess, I've uh, done a Yui to, um, to go through this little bit of road again. And I think, I think you'll see why. documented somewhere that this is one of New Zealand's top driver's roads but I had no idea Aren't making a bad pace in that uh, it's a Renault traffic van. Okay. Getting in towards Napier now and uh, look over to the left. You can see the Mystic Mount Egmont. And there is some clouds around it. Welcome to Urunui. Final 
there an acre. It's a big day. Well, it's been quite a big day. Uh, this will be, I think it's 1,050 kilometres. I'll need to check that later. Uh, getting up early was the best move ever. So I'm so pleased that um, I asked my mate Marty, you know, what he was doing, and because uh, I was planning on starting at six, thinking, oh, that's an early start. And uh, he told me that he starts at uh, wasn't starts at like three two. And because um, I got back quite late last night, it's about midnight before I could get to sleep. So I thought, well, I'll definitely make sure that I get a good three hours. And, um, which I did. And, uh, so I got up at 3.30 for a 4 o'clock departure. And I managed to get away just before 4, which was good. Get my friends here, follow me around. Morning. The only thing that was a bit, well not dodgy or sketchy, is that obviously, you know, when it's really dark and you're the only one on the road, there's a bit of wildlife around, you know, you want to be taking it easy. But it means that, you know, you've got the first three or 400 k's under the belt before sort of 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning and before a lot of other people get on the road. So that was brilliant. I do have a sore bottom. It's had a long time in the seat, so I'm definitely going to be thinking about some things there. And um, listen, I've got very sore ears from the earplugs in my ears for the last two days, so I need to think about the appropriate strategy for that. But really, no complaints. And it's been an incredible day again, a bit like yesterday. Uh, so I'm pleased I've recorded some of it so I can look back and hope you find some of it interesting too.